God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead. She bowed herself and travailed for her pains came upon her. So she kind of went into this early labor, hearing all this bad news, all this stressful news. She goes into labor. It says in verse 20, and about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, fear not for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. That was, um, so that's one story. And then in Genesis 35, verse number 16, we're going to see Rachel also dies in childbirth. Verse number 16, the Bible says, And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not. Thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Now, I didn't have this in my notes, but we're going to pause right here. And I need to explain that, you know, there is never, it's never right to kill a baby. It's never right to commit an abortion. We see two instances of women dying in childbirth. But we don't see an instance of saying, oh, this birth is going to kill you, so let's kill the child. Let's murder the baby to try to save your life. We don't see that happen one time. Yeah. And, uh, and we have two instances here of, of women dying during childbirth. And, no, and zero instances of God ever saying, execute that child in order to save someone else's life. Doesn't happen one time. It's wicked. Now, I think the best way to minimize this risk, though, the, you know, the risk in having a child is to have the experienced midwife there. And my wife is actually a very good example of this because there's a lot of people, you know, you could get caught up into thinking all these doctors, they don't know what they're talking about, you know, and kind of get to this other extreme. Like the one extreme is saying Everything a doctor says is gospel, and I just need to listen to everything that he says and do whatever he says. That's one extreme. That's kind of the extreme that I was brought up in. The other extreme is just to say, I reject everything, all of it. You know, I'm just going to do everything on my own. We'll be fine. Don't need to talk to anyone. Don't need any help. We'll just, you know, trust God and, and that's it. No more. I don't think that's the, the most wise decision to make either. I think it's good to have people who are very experienced, especially when it comes to childbirth. We saw that there are instances where people can die from this. My wife could have died uh, very easily. We had, was it with Sarah? I believe it was with Sarah. When she gave birth to Sarah, we had two midwives there. Because the midwife that we used had one regularly with her that was in training. She was constantly training new midwives. She had asked us at this birth, hey, would it be okay for my assistant to basically to do the work, right? To, to, to help out with in, in, in the delivery of the child and, and kind of be the primary care person. Or well, sure, as long as you're there too, right? Because this, this is a big deal for us, right? We're, we're, we hired her for good reasons because we know her, we like her. She's very good, very experienced, very knowledgeable, very smart, knew what she's doing. Uh, excellent midwife. Now, didn't have any problems with the assistant. Assistant was fine, but the problem came in after the birth. Everything's good. My wife's in bed. But see, my wife has a problem of... Um, and I may get some of the some of the terms wrong, but she, she gets these like the blood clots and, and the wound kind of stays open. So she's at risk of bleeding out. And what the midwife has to do is kind of push on her gut to expel the things that are kind of keeping the, the uterus open and the, and the wound open from having the child. And see, the assistant didn't catch that that she was having this issue. But the experienced midwife did catch that. And that's something that I probably wouldn't have caught. I don't have a lot of experience in this. I don't know that much. My wife very easily could have bled out and lost too much blood and died as a result of that. There's a very serious risk, but thank God we had a very knowledgeable person there, assistant, the, the midwife, 
that is that has experience that knows this is very sharp on her game has studied and and learned a lot about just the birthing process and was able to help to be there to make sure that we didn't have any serious problem because she did catch it and and everything was okay after that but the point is that had that person not been there had we just tried to do everything on our own we could have had disastrous results it was good to have someone there because look let's face it we can't all be experts at everything at some point it's a good idea to, to do your best to trust someone and see when we interviewed people and we talked to men's wives we try to get where are they coming from what is their direction and their view of medicine and helping and practicing well her view was the body is, is wonderfully created. Let's let the body or help the body do what it does. And I think that's the best approach to take with health in general. God designed things the way he designed it. Let's, first of all, not do anything to do any harm to your body. And second of all, let's just do things that are going to promote helping your body do what it does. So if there's some deficiency in you, let's try to help that deficiency just where, where the body needs that little extra boost to get the job done that it's already been designed to do. And with that type of an approach, I think that's a wise way to go through uh, making these decisions.